a group of black women who were kicked off that Napa Valley wine train. Well, here's the update for you this morning. They received an apology from the CEO of the company, and this is what it reads. The apology says, quote, the wine train was 100% wrong in its handling of this issue. I appreciate your recommendation that our staff could use additional cultural diversity and sensitivity training. Yeah, so we wanted to dig deeper into this whole story and, and sort of what racial stereotypes may have played in the way all of this went down. Mm -hmm. Joining us this morning, we have the features editor for Essence Magazine, Lauren Williams. We have pop culture expert and political analyst, Lisa Durden. And we have actress Andrea Lewis. Good morning, ladies, to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. So let me just start with a yes or no question <laughs> as we kind of set, set up the conversation here. Uh, do you believe, yes or no, that these women would have been escorted off of that train if they were not black or if they were white? Would you yes or no? No. no. Would not have all of you, all, all of you say that no. they absolutely <laughs> have because these Negative. women were no. black. Yes. Okay, so what right. do you make of the apology then? I think, go ahead. I mean, I think it's good that they have an apology, but I think it's it's almost ridiculous to say that you're going to have to have, you know, sensitivity and diversity training for somebody on a, a wine train. Yeah, like, right. that, that right. shouldn't be... I it's gotta, just backpedaling. Yeah. I mean, of course they're going to backpedal and say we're going to do diversity training. That's the go-to line. Mm -hmm. But you're on a party train. We're drinking wine. Right, There's yeah. a group of women who are in a book club, and they're chatting and talking. Who were these people that made complaints? Where is the actual complaint? Yeah. What's going on? I was right. digging deeper into that to find out where the complaint was, who was the person that was complained. Apparently, yeah. they were told two or three times to pipe down, but we never really figured out who that person was. And then on the Facebook page, there were a lot of people that actually came to these ladies' support, exactly. yeah. including right. the police officers, <laughs> who sort of I thought that. that this whole thing was ridiculous. Right. So yeah. what, what is the message that we want to talk about in terms of what happened here? And is this a bigger issue that maybe that we need to shine light on? I think the underlying issue here is, especially with the hashtag laughing while black, it's like now you've added another item to the long list of very normal things that black people cannot do without being accosted. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. there's a sentiment that black women are not afforded the same courtesies, the same yeah. um, yep. respect that, that other groups of women are. And it's just kind of like in this environment that we live in now, there's a lot of hypersensitivity around over-policing and overreacting. Absolutely. Things. And you know, the fact that these women were paraded six cars down and the cops yeah. were- To the were popo? popo? Right. You're meaning the popo? And I yeah. think it's setting a precedence for the loud black woman stereotype. Yeah. So now are we going to have this thing called pulling the black card and pulling the loud card, mm. yeah. that's what it's doing. Well, Shonda Rhimes was actually, uh, you know, we talked about that, <laughs> yeah. perceived as being an angry black woman in Hollywood. Yeah. And, and you're and, loud. Well, yeah. I'm loud, but I don't mean, you know, that's, <laughs> just, that's Lisa. But, but that's your personality. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think here's the thing. When I think in women in general, if you are assertive, Absolutely. if you are smart, if you do challenge anybody, Absolutely. you are always perceived as being a challenge or a yourself. Yeah. Because a you're not being yeah. obedient. Yes, um, exactly. So I think that's something that women in general also across color lines can also understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the Shonda Rhimes thing mm -hmm. resonated with women and feminists mm -hmm. yeah. across the board yep. in order for us to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. your, your reaction to that? And that lonely that? white woman who was in the book club, there was one white woman, she yeah. got pulled off with them. Mm -hmm. I guess she learned a valuable lesson. Yeah. <laughs> she was black by popular demand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 let me funny. ask you this, because you know, the, when I looked into the story, the one thing that really, that really struck me is what they initially, what the train company yeah. initially said. They, they went out on their Facebook page saying, saying that following a verbal and physical abuse toward uh. guests and staff, it was necessary to get police involved and take the women off the train. Mm -hmm. That is what they said initially. Now, mind you, they dialed that back like right quick. Oh, yeah. 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 But, but the fact, you know, what, what do you think, what do you make of it that this, this group of women is accused of being uh, verbally and physically abusive and ultimately that's not the case. I mean, what do you make of that? Is that that stereotype coming coming to life? That's yeah. the kind of gang violence. Are we in a gang? Yeah. I mean, really? So we're all talking all of a sudden the talking went to it punching you in the face. They're just making up things because we're in a collective having a good time. That's that whole issue. It's mm -hmm. sickening. It's the and stereotype think, again yeah. and, and yeah. having reason to well, we called the police. So let's give a reason for why we right. had to call the, these women were scary and they're Trump threatening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're intimidating <laughs> to me and it's like it's a book club majority of the right. women they're were old, in their they're 50s right. and 60s. Yeah. They had some of them and had a knee replacement. Yeah. 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 Right. And, I think that, and I think that that statement came out because Seriously. it resonates because yeah. people actually believe that. Black women are always mm -hmm. typically assigned these like you know hyper masculine or super violent roles and I feel like the, the, when that Facebook 
post well, came out, they knew that people would buy into and it. And even yeah. black men say, that's why we marry white women now, because you're too loud and you talk too much. So when black men want to hurt us, they will say the same thing that society tells them to say when they don't want to date us. And they say, well, that's why we don't like you now. We like white women because you're too loud. Well, I think that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other story that we'll have to talk about. But right. I do I do hear you. I think when women want to empower themselves exactly. and, and stand up for themselves, you are targeted, whether it's the workplace, whether you're Absolutely. with your friends, whether you're doing anything. Yeah. Empowerment, for some for some reason, it just makes people feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to break that cycle. Yep. Yeah. Great conversation, guys. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You. I mean, it is really important to break these stereotypes so our kids and generations from now won't have to deal with this yes. kind of C-R-A-P, right? I said it. Exactly. I said it. Thank you, ladies, for coming in. Thank you. Time now is 740.